Hi, everybody. Um, I hope you're ready for some scary times. Um, but worry not. We're not alone, because with me, I have the lovely a Variety Pack. Hello. Happy to be here. Yes. Um, and before we get into the run, um, which stress ended up winning the bid war? Our winner is the Resident Evil 4 OG dress. All right, perfect. So, after the count of three, let us begin the run. Three, two, one, let us begin All right, the run. Luck. So obviously with this being New Game Plus, we get all kinds of fancy toys like the um, Striker Charm right away. We also have the Cat Set, which allows us to have infinite ammo except for grenades and healing items. And of course the infinite rocket, that's its own thing. And also the merchant was just behind us, but he's not going to remember that. Aim, fire, and that's the boss fight done. We're going to run outside. Also, you can see the cut on Ada's arm. That's because a major difference between original and remake is the fact that Ada is infected with a Plagueis parasite herself. And then we're going to get a call from Wesker here. We're going to go up. While we're going up, we're going to quickly go into the pause menu and turn off auto aim because it can cause us some issues. And then we are going to have a conversation with Wesker about sticking to the high ground because we have the means. However, we're not going to do that at all because guess what? The low ground is faster. And therefore, we're going to take the low ground because now I don't know the definition of the high ground, but I'm going to keep going lower and lower. So I'm pretty sure I'm taking the low ground as we go here, stealthing our way through. Although, oh no, we've now been caught and now they're going to start using catapults against me, but it should be perfectly fine. Um, one thing about the Striker Charm is that it does give us 8% movement speed, and Ada only has to pay $100,000 for it, so you will see it in a new game run as well. Um, of course, it is a um, homage, if you will, to the Dipman glitch in the original RE4, which gave you 1.5 movement speed, which was really nice. But here, it's only 8%, but 8% is better than nothing. As we continue on to Chapter 2. By the way, Chapter 1 is done. And obviously we have our handy dandy grappling hook, which only has very set locations. There's nothing like glitchy we can do with it or like anything we can do to give us a super advantage. So it's just a thing that they added for certain spots. Um, as we continue here, we're going to take a wide turn here because unfortunately, if you go near her, she will push you, which is very bad. And then we're going to jump down here and we're going to rocket the door. The reason I am rocketing the door is because there's a cow man on the other side. If the cow man does not die, he will appear on the bridge, which is directly after this segment here. I am now switching to the shotgun because we need this enemy to be knocked over. Perfect. And then I'm going to switch to the bow gun because after we have another conversation with Wesker, that this one is skippable, we're going to hit a door in the hopes that the other people on the other side of the door open it for me, which gives us a very good chance to not get grabbed. Whereas if we open the door ourselves, there's a very high chance we'll get grabbed. So that is the purpose for that. Um, and of course, it opens the door for us, so it saves us a little bit of time as we go here. So here we go, and we're good. At least I hope. Sometimes they don't want to run through the door, but generally, especially if you see the guy inside the house running towards you, this is what happens. We are then going to switch back to the bleh, the rocket launcher because we are not going to be engaging in combat with anybody. We are just going to run past everybody, and anybody that we do that is in our way is going to get grapple kicked as we use the grappling hook in this little section here. Hopefully, we don't see the glitch. Perfect. There is a small glitch that happens there that loses a bit of time because the grappling hook wire um, comes from underneath Ada's feet and it loses I think a second and a half so it's not a major time loss but you definitely don't want to see it as we continue on here 
Again, no need for combat, which is why we have the rocket launcher out. Typically, we want to use the shotgun to knock down enemies because the shotgun will knock them down without a flinch possibility, whereas the rocket launcher and the bow gun has the possibility to flinch, which is not exactly the greatest thing in the world. So if they didn't cause Ada to flinch, I probably wouldn't have the shotgun at all because the shotgun is a little unreliable because depending how you hit an enemy, it might not um, get rid of them. And here we have all the enemies despawning, so all the enemies that I just ran past, completely fine. Um, and then these enemies here, the 12 that are spawning in, won't hit us unless we provoke them. But because we don't need to see the merchant or anything like that or need any money, we won't need to deal with them at all. There is an enemy there that is wearing a pair of glasses that you can sell for $3,000. But again, whereas we're not dealing with the merchant, we don't have to worry about that. So they're just going to the church and we're just going on to the second boss fight of the run. There are only two chapters in the entire run that don't have bosses in them but that is four and six. Slicing in is slightly faster. Again, I'm not sure exactly how fast, but just a tiny bit faster than running directly into the cutscene as we go into the next boss fight. With this boss fight, you want to run up a bit so that her hitbox spawns in properly so that you can easily hit her. If you fire too soon, there's a chance that her hitbox isn't fully spawned in and that you're only going to do partial damage, which could send her into phase two. If she's into phase two, that's quite a bit of time loss. There is a chance to recover though, as you can possibly get a second or even a third rocket shot in, which is not exactly the best, but it's better than having phase two happen at all because she will teleport to the opposite side of the arena as we head into chapter three and start a chase sequence coming up shortly. Um, so right now we're going into Mendez's house. We've met Leon, quote unquote. Leon doesn't know we're there, but we know he's here. Um, she's going to enter the house slowly. And unfortunately, even though we know where Lewis is, we can't leave the house until Ada herself knows that. So we have to go and get a key and open the dresser back upstairs. Again, there are some items you could grab here if you really needed to, but they're not really necessary here on New Game Plus. Grab the key and head back upstairs and get ready for a chase sequence because a certain somebody didn't actually leave home that far and is very angry that we kind of broke in and entered his home. So here we go. Oh, right, the map will pop up periodically. There we go, it's Mendez. So he punches really, really hard. We don't want him to punch really hard. Oh, you were almost a little too late. Again, grappling over that is best because there is a explosive charge there, which I believe Mendez is hitting because there will be some dialogue coming up where Mendez says some lines and it sounds like he's directly behind us when in fact he's not even coming down the stairs until we pass that box over there. As there are some enemies here, luckily we got through them all pretty easily and then we are going up. And then we have some shenanigans to um, get through as Mendez stops chasing us despite the fact that I think he's very capable of ripping down that red door with ease. He's got other things to do. So now we're in the abandoned factory. Here we go. Duck. Be very careful not to explode that because we don't want this guy running yet. The reason we're trying to get rid of the guy with the jacket is because he is the only one that stays spawned in. Also, I didn't even know that could go and hit out of bounds, so that's something new. Luckily, we didn't get grabbed or anything, and there's still an easy way to deal with the jacket man because he will spawn back in. But if we don't look at him, he will still he'll he'll just sit in the corner. Um, which is really nice, as we're now realizing that we are slowly becoming possessed by the parasite that we were infected back in Chapter 1. Again, you don't need to pay attention to the neck, you can just pay attention to the footprint, but you do have to pay attention to this pack of cigarettes. If you don't turn the cigarettes, the game will not let you continue, and you'll just be stuck until you turn the pack of cigarettes and call Lewis. Now that we've called Lewis, a bunch of enemies are going to spawn in here, and here's where things get a little bit volatile, but we should be fine. So what is he going to do? Good. Again, I'm pulling out my knife there to try to parry his axe, just in case. And by going into a top-down perspective, or as I like to call it, RTS camera, because those were the games that I played the most that had a top-down perspective, we're able to manipulate the enemy's AI a bit, because the enemy doesn't quite know how to react 
uh, based on how the camera is turned. Just a little fun feature of the Reach for the Moon engine. Um, it's a very fun engine. Um, as we're now being rescued by Wesker because we passed out the second we opened the factory door, although I believe it is canon that Ada takes care of everybody inside, even though we ran past everybody. And then no dog here to worry about, but we do have Plogus heads to worry about here, so we're going to do the RTS camera once again to uh, pass them. Again, it's a really nice thing that not looking at enemies kind of keeps them off of us. Very nice. And we're about to pass the second guaranteed Plogus head coming up here. There are three in total that you can pass that are guaranteed. The first one, obviously, we just passed. The second one is by the fire here, and the third one is not until Chapter 4. So, even though we're about to come up on Chapter 4 here as we're about to jump into this house, if I were to hit a barrel outside, this gentleman up here wouldn't be staring at me. He'd be trying to break the window. It's a little weird. But again, it kind of loses us a bit of time, as you could see that we didn't need to really worry about it. Now, will this gentleman over here please keep the door open for me? Again, dodge the axe. Thank you for keeping the door open. Very much appreciated. And now we're pretty much smooth sailing to the boss of Chapter 3. There's nothing really to worry about because the enemies are too spread out. If there was a bit more congestion, we'd probably have something to worry about. But because there's not that congestion, as you can see, we are just walking on through straight into Chapter 3's boss, which is an El Gigante. As you can see that she's running to the house to try to help Leon and Louis. But oh no, the bridge collapsed. And oh no, the boss fight is done. And now we're going back to the castle, which in the cutscenes, Ada is not happy about. She's actually quite upset. And because of that, and also because it's illegal to talk to Leon, we're not going to let Lewis do that. Now, there is an actual reason for that, and that is the fact that any cutscene that you can move in, the IGT is still active. But I like to be mean to Lewis, so that's why I say that it's illegal for him to talk to Leon as we go and pull some levers as we're waiting for Lewis to kind of get down here. We're in a bit of a little auto section because there is a way to pass Lewis, but the game's going to force me to walk regardless, which also means that I should be switching to my shotgun because that is the next necessary weapon that I need. Um, I'm not exactly 100% sure how it's done, but I know that it can be done, but I've never had it explained to me, so I'm not 100% sure how you would pull it off. And now Lewis has gone and ran into a burning building because he was trying to get a suppressant. Um, but unfortunately, the laboratory's on fire, and he's slowly dying. Why Ada doesn't die? It's because she's a super spy. Um, but this cutscene coming up where she throws Lewis out of the room, if you watch it, he will be several feet ahead of you, making it very difficult for you to pass him. You do not want him in front of you because he takes forever to climb the ladder. It is absolutely terrible for him to do so. So we want to make sure that we're ahead of him. So very important to skip that cutscene. And also the 8% movement speed is a blessing in disguise for that because again he climbs it really really slow for some reason and i don't know why i pulled out the rocket launcher but i accidentally pulled out the rocket launcher luckily it was an easy fix here we go slicing the door if lewis gets here first he'll be like oh no i don't have a key and despite the fact that he has a gun in his hand he won't open it but now we go our separate ways and into finding three ingredients to create a new suppressant so we're going to do that now. And the reason I have the shotgun out is because of these two enemies here. But of course, we've got to do some QTEs and grab a few tablets before we can do that. As we just move along here, also the merchant is here. Unfortunately, he forgets all the business that we've done. So that's why we're not talking to him at all. Um, nice fellow, though. Very nice fellow. As we continue here, again... Uh, we're going to have to shoot him again because there is a bit of a time for the door to open here. And there we go. So one, two, three, four. Turn. There we go. And then we're going to switch to the pistol because unfortunately the shotgun spread is kind of terrible. And if we hit the wrong shield, the puzzle resets. So we need the pistol for this for better accuracy. There we go. And that's ingredient number one, switching back to the rocket launcher because we need to hit multiple things and the rocket launcher is perfect for that. And we're also going to pick up this flash grenade. It's not really needed, but you know what? It's there and it doesn't cost us any time. So we're doing pretty good. 
as we head to ingredient number two, which is the gold bottle. However, we're also going to be introduced to a new enemy type here, and it is some Plogus armors, but first we have this puzzle to solve. Because one of the other things about Separate Ways Remake is that anything that was missing from Leon is here with Ada. So the classic drill room, welcome to the classic drill room. We are also going to switch to our grenade of choice, which for me is a heavy grenade, but you can do this with a regular grenade. Do not pick that up yet. Throw that first. Make sure to pick up the lantern before the explosion, otherwise this trick doesn't work. Because we've done that, the door will open and we don't have to wait for the cutscene to end before we can start uh, solving the puzzle again. Very nice. As we continue on, grapple out, and unfortunately we have to watch the drill sort of hit the wall. Um, as we now have the lantern in order to go get piece number two, as you can see. Um, again, the rocket launcher is going to take care of the Plogus armors. So if you would like uh, to make any announcements or read any donations, uh, Carrera, that would be great. You betcha. You are getting some love from your community here. So we have $25 from Erica Lawless. Hey, Abby Scorner, best of luck with the run. You've got this. Just remember to stick to the high ground. After all, you have the means. And another $25 from Project Omega. So good luck on the run, Abby. Go, Ada, go. All right. Real quick reminder to everybody, we do have that Trepang 2 T-Posing Enemies incentive. We are currently at $244 out of the $1,500 that we need. As a reminder, if we meet that, the enemies are going to be locked in T-Pose even as they shoot at you and yell. It's going to be awesome. Let's try to get that met. All right. Also, Astrid's a fantastic runner, so you don't want to miss that run. Um, so right now I have a flash grenade in my hand, and that's because it makes the Glory Alas Plagas Man very simple here. Um, as sometimes the grenade can whiff, or not the grenade, but the RPG can miss. So we're going to throw that, go over, and then aim and fire. This just basically stops him from spouting his chant, which unfortunately causes Ada to be delayed. So here we go, running. Also, there's the third guaranteed Plogus head as she spits acid at me. Fantastic. As we keep going, um, we are now on our way to the third ingredient, which also ends the chapter. And then we are on to chapter five, where things really start to ramp up, as we will also be getting rid of our parasite, which is done very differently compared to uh, how Leon and Ashley removed their parasite as we will see. Well, we won't see because we'll be skipping the cutscene, but um, if you were to watch the cutscene, you would understand as we continue to run as fast as humanly possible here. Very nice. Careful. And there we go. So the puzzle here never changes. So we need that, deer head, and then a crocodile, and there we go. We now have the ingredients necessary. Excellent. And thus chapter 5 ends. However, not everything is peachy. So here we go, switching back, and then we're going to jump down the stairs because it's slightly faster than uh, walking down the stairs. And then we have the shotgun out because that is the first thing we need to do, take care of an enemy. And then we can switch back to the rocket launcher, and then we'll be switching back to the bow gun. The bow gun is most important in Chapter 6, but sees the most action in Chapter 5. It's worth so noting that, that... Sorry, it's worth noting that because this is New Game Plus, the margin for error to achieve a PB is significantly reduced. Uh, simply being grabbed or hit with this acid spit, as we saw before, can spell the end for a good runner like Abby, and movement becomes pretty paramount to success, so Abby's doing a pretty good job so far. Yes. And unfortunately, during this, we can't do anything. Uh, we can't change weapons. We're just here along for the ride. And also, Lewis somehow has enough red ink. We also saw how big that container of ink was to write giant letters and arrows with directions on where to go. And I'm just like, there couldn't have been enough ink to make three suppressants and all these notes. So clearly, this is a bottomless 
ink uh, container. So there's obviously some sort of magic happening in the Resident Evil universe. There we go, taking care of those three. Unfortunately, the bow gun doesn't quite always guarantee the death of those three, but the bow gun does guarantee that using the rocket launcher tends to uh, not work as always, and also grenades just tend to not like me for that. A lot of runners will use grenades there. And then after the four turns, the water drains, and the camera always puts us back facing the valve, but I always turn it because that's just a habit because all the other valves allow me to do that. So we have the bow gun out still because we have to deal with two Novistadors, and that is what we will be doing here as we're running because we need them to die so that they don't hit me. Some runners uh, will use the shotgun, but unfortunately um, my aim is a tad bit slow with the shotgun, so I often get hit if I try to do that. However, speaking of the shotgun, we're going to be uh, switching. Also, oh, everyone say hi to Lord of the Waterways, which was the fish that was swimming in there, which is also a quest item. And also there's still a Novista door behind me, so we want to be quick there as we switch back to the rocket launcher because we have a Gyarador to, to deal with. You could potentially call this a, a boss fight because there is a Gyarador, which are tough enemies as well as a lot of uh, zealots that drop down, but because we have the rocket launcher simply dealt with, and the second the Gyarador dies, the gate will rise, which is simply fantastic. Everything is great. Um, and then we have an elevator that is unskippable. So um, if there's any more donations, Carrera, that would be great. You betcha. I have $25 from Jamie that says, have to donate for Spooky Block. This is my favorite block. I'm so excited. We also have $10 from Ill Focus Gamer. Gotta support my yes. favorite goose for the Risaru DX stretch goal and support a great cause at the same time. Let's go Fatals. That's a great reminder about our milestone incentive. If we hit $30,000, we are going to be playing Sonic Adventure DX, the director's cut. If anyone wanted some more information about that, there's some info on it. So Sonic Story is the most difficult story to learn and its category is the most competitive of the game's leaderboards. It's gonna feature high speeds, intricate movement, and absolutely wild clips that are gonna turn five minute stages into five second ones. That's something I definitely wanna see. So get those donations in. Nice. So as you just saw, that was a really quick boss fight, and you also saw me pick up an item. You have to pick up the item for phase two to begin, and as Lewis is dying here, we can see those Novisadors just chilling, watching us, and I have a small theory about that. Because we don't have the parasite anymore, because once Ada killed the boss, um, she... her parasite leaves. And so my theory is, is that the Novisadors can't see her, because she doesn't have a parasite anymore. Now, of course, we will be running into more no, bleh, more Novistadors in Chapter 7. However, I think that's because Sadler is around that we see them and that they can see us. But that's just my theory about that. As we continue on here, we now have to chase after Krauser, and we're about to come into the giant pummelers that you may have remembered from the OG RE4. They're back, and they're here, and they will insta-kill you if they hit you. So here we go, not bad. As we continue to climb, the reason I have the shotgun out, or should have the shotgun out, is for this person up here to make sure that he is out of my way. There we go. And then we're going to spin this three times in order to make sure that we can make it to the gate in time. On other difficulties, you do have to spin it all four times, but here we only need to do it three, as we're just jumping and spinning and grappling up to kick that guy and then switching to the bow gun. Like I said, the bow gun sees the most action in five, but becomes very important in chapter six due to being able to set up a skip. As we keep running here, and about to come across some enemies, because of course there's plenty of enemies. And also, we're going to have to shoot a ledge here to make sure that three enemies get out of my way. 
There we go. Really, we want the X one out of our way because he has a great chance to hit us. That guy's not going to be able to hit us, which is great. Also, if we get hit and Ada's kind of limping along, we're going to have a greater chance of being crushed here as this is kind of a bit risky. Um, going for this straight in one shot, it's actually really hard to do on other difficulties and we made it. I think I didn't aim that correctly and that's fine. Try again. Again, it doesn't matter that I'm doing this while that's happening. There we go. Careful. I'm probably going to get hit here. There we go. Okay, I almost died, but we were fine. Um, now we have what I like to call the stairway to hell. Why is it called the stairway to hell? Because um, there's a lot of enemies here. I think there's at least eight. Um, and obviously they're all trying to stop me, shoot me, and whatnot, but luckily we have enough flash grenades to get through this. So flash grenade number one. And then we're going up. Hopefully everyone's still flashed here. And there we go again. Ooh. All right. Again, the stairway is very volatile, so it earns its name, unfortunately, here. And then there we go. We made it through, switching back to the shotgun because that is the next weapon we are going to need. Um, very good. And then we have quite the long elevator ride here. Uh, Wesker is actually going to call us. Skipping the dialogue doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't increase or decrease the time, but I usually skip it. Um, because up until very recently, I was telling lies whenever I would run this game. Because the lie was that if you play on a different language outside of English, at least on the PS4, you're not going to hear the radio calls. Turns out that it's actually playing through the PlayStation speaker if you choose any other language. So make sure to turn that off. It's not a glitch. It's not a bug. They just decided to put the radio dialogue elsewhere. So my apologies for the last eight months. Um, but that aside, we are now down at the bottom. And we have the shotgun out for specifically one enemy, and there he is. Again, the most dangerous enemy is not somebody with a crossbow, somebody with a scythe, or any kind of weapon. No, it's the ones that don't have weapons, because getting grabbed can be the worst, as it is the biggest time loss you can have in the run. And there's Krauser getting away, but luckily he, for some reason, left a boat completely intact. No idea why. It makes no sense at all. So here we go, on to chapter 6, which is the fun chapter, because we get to meet a lovely friend, but we'll get to that um, later on in the run towards the end of the chapter, as we're running here with our trusty rocket launcher, and we're going to see all kinds of enemies. Now we're going against the military-trained uh, Yanato here. Um, they're a lot more aggressive than the others. Very nice. We didn't get hit here, and they kept the door open for me, which is why we don't kill them before we get through here, because we want them to keep the door open. There we go. Number one. And number two. And three, just in case, because if they get close to that door area, we're kind of a bit doomed because it won't let us use the lift. Um, so that's why it's important to make sure that they're all hit and kind of out of the way. And then right now I'm trying to see if I can deal with a cowman, because there's a cowman down there that we can't quite see. So that is why so many rocket shots. Um, and then we are going to switch to flash grenades. Flash grenades become very important in the back half of the run rather than the front half. There's the cowman. Unfortunately, we didn't kill him, but luckily he went for a kick instead of a clothesline because that would have been far more dangerous. Throw that. Good. Apparently that guy didn't want to get hit by it, but it's fine. Throw another flash grenade, and the reason we're flowing, throwing the second flash grenade is because it makes it... Come on. Get unstuck. Is because it's a bit faster for opening the door, though I did get caught behind the door. And now we come into the regenerators. That's right, Ada now has to deal with regenerators. Um, she only has to deal with three, but there are five that she can encounter. And we will only need to do combat against one, because if a regenerator runs, their hitbox, for some reason, tends to disappear, and we can just easily run past. 
But of course, we have these three, and for the sake of consistency, we're going to hit them. You can jump through the window and typically be fine, though if they block you, you can get a very weird glitch happening. So it's just best to kill them. Same thing with regenerator number one here. Aim fire, and we should be good. Yes, excellent. We're currently getting a... Um, power supply so that we can power the door and also stop the electricity between the servers so we can pass them as we continue to run as fast as possible. Um, again, nobody knows who exposed this panel because Ada's getting here after Leon did and there is no panel exposure when Leon's here so it's a little weird that that's happened as we continue on here. Um, again, we have uh, two more regenerators to get through, but we also have the introduction of the spider ploguses. Spider ploguses are kind of annoying, and fun fact, if you didn't have that 8% speed boost, it is a lot easier to run past them. But unfortunately, we have uh, that speed boost, so we have to kill them. There's number one, and are you going to run? Hooray! Of course, it doesn't work every time I say that their hitboxes disappear, but sometimes they're going to hit you. But trust me, that was not as bad as if it was walking. As we continue here. Alright. Moving right along, and now we have a gondola section coming up, uh, which is an auto-scroller. So, um... Carrera, if you have any uh, donations or announcements, uh, now would be a good time as well. Sure thing. So we have $250 from LZ Moto. No comment, but thank you so much for that generous donation. I also had $10 from Vicarious Vice. They say there was a donation comment here. It's gone now. Oh no. oh no, I don't know where it went. And $25 from Guiltless that says less than three. Thank you for that. Have time for one more? Yep. And also $25 from Dirk that says donations. I love the enthusiasm. So if you were wondering why I was trying to hit that guy before the second guy, it's because before this guy starts turning, if you kill the guy on the left or the guy on the right, a second guy will spawn before the rocket guy spawns. So I was just trying to show that off because not many people know about the second guy, but unfortunately, my aim just said no. Sometimes you get really good aim in this section, other times the game's like, oh, you're trying to hit things? Why no? So we have one more guy here. There we go. Again, the pistol is really good here. Some people will use the bow gun, but the pistol is just a little bit faster and can also hit everybody from whatever distance you're at, which is fantastic. But now, now we have the time where the bow gun becomes the most important weapon in our inventory because the bow gun makes blowing up these turrets very easy compared to the rocket launcher because one thing about Ada's rocket launcher is it tends to curve the shot which is not the greatest thing in the world also everybody I hope you're ready to see someone not know how to do the cha-cha slide which is very important because if he does the cha-cha slide correctly we're gonna get hit but if he does it incorrectly we'll be able to pass him unscathed of course if you don't know the cha-cha slide says slide to the left they slid to the right and so they missed it is very important that that guy follows us, by the way, because we're going to use him to skip this turret. Hopefully he goes for another swing. There we go. Swing and a miss. Run very far away. Aim at a distance, please. And we're going to have the turret hit him so we can just run on through, which saves about a minute and a half-ish depending how good you can run past everybody, but we don't have to worry about that as we continue on. And now we get to meet the most important thing in the run, our friendly neighborhood lizard friend. I hope you're ready to meet him because he's coming right up provided I can get unstuck from that wall. So again, all the codes are the same on this difficulty as well as standard. Uh, professional has different um, codes as well as hardcore. 
And here he comes. He's very hungry. He wants to kind of eat us, but he's actually attempting to hug us. But unfortunately, he's trying to use his teeth. He's just really, really hungry. So we're going to avoid him. We're going to blow up that wall. Fun fact, I thought that was the way you were supposed to get through that. But there's actually another path where you don't have to explode anything, but it's a bit longer. We are then going to switch to the rocket launcher because we are going to damage boost ourselves. This is the only part where we intentionally take damage. You don't necessarily need to use the rocket launcher for this, but it just works the best I find here. Also, I say he's a friendly lizard friend who's hungry because he will sit there and wait forever for you to put in that code. And there we go. A bit of lore behind him as well. He has five times the regenerative properties as, an, as a regenerator does, so that's why you can't damage him at any point, as we now have lasers to deal with. So here we go. The laser section is finally back. Damage boost yourself. You want to damage boost yourself specifically into this cutscene because she will stand up. If you damage boost yourself and you don't see this cutscene go off, you have to wait until Ada starts standing up again. As we continue on, one two, three, and there you go. We then have one more thing to do, as Wesker gave us a case to set off some explosions, which is why we're in the facility in the first place. Um, so we have done so, and we are good. But however, if you thought we were done with the friendly lizard, unfortunately no, because he's about to make a comeback in a really big way. As we can hear him somehow above us, it is unknown how he got above us so quickly, but he did, and oh look, he bursted through the walls, and we have more lasers to deal with. Now, as I mentioned, he has five times the regenerative pro properties as an Iron Maiden. However, as we can see, he does get injured by the lasers. And this is the end of Chapter 6. These blue lasers will deal with our lizard friend, even though we are way past him before that even happens. But the game will show you the lasers cutting him into pieces. And that was Chapter 6. On to Chapter 7. Who could have asked for more? So here we go. There's a merchant on that wall, but we're not going to go in there. And then we have some enemies to deal with. We're going to rocket the door because there's an enemy on the other side. And the reason we're also using the rocket launcher is because it causes that guy specifically to flinch. Now, this guy likes to have a magical homing axe, but it depends if it's going to hit me. There we go. The magical homing axe has worked. I better heal before that guy hits me because that would have been death otherwise. So here we go, running as fast as we can. Hit the rock. We don't know if we got the spider plogus. We did not, which means we're going to duck under that one so that the plot, so that the spider plogus is dealt with because there is another corpse that he can possess. And we're also going to hope that the pig man gets hit. Please, hitboxes move. There we go. We are then going to switch to the flash grenade because we have some people that need a little bit of light. So here we go, just slowly going up. Excellent. Very good. There's also some treasure you can get here, as well as another flash grenade. This barrette man, uh, his barrette is worth $10,000, but since we don't need any more pesetas, we're just going to run past and hopefully we hit him. Excellent. Everything is fine. However, they can access a question if need be, but we're hopefully not going to get that. Also, the RTS camera angle is coming back because we have some Novista doors to deal with and we'll be using that to get through. Um, because for whatever reason, the enemy that this works the best on is the Novista doors here. There we go. And here we go into the Osman Sadler fight. Who also knows that Wesker is here. And also don't join Covenant's chat, it never works out. And now we are in the final section of the game. We do have to look at this rocket. We cannot continue until we look at the rocket. Then we're going to zip line over or grapple over and we have four minutes and 35 seconds left i might have said that a little too soon i don't know if we can do it chad i don't know if we can do it it's 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 gonna be tough i don't know if that's enough time I believe. usually if they're putting timers we're kind of doomed there Great we go he transformed. yep 
Perfect. We have $100 from Reverend Gumby with no comment, but thank you so much for that generous donation. And chat, as we are nearing the end of this run and getting ready to start Trepang 2, we still need to meet that T-Posing Enemies incentive. The sooner we get that met, the longer we get to see those enemies T-Posing. So make sure that when you put in those donations, you're scrolling down to the bottom, selecting Add Incentive, and then choosing the Unlock T-Posing Enemies Incentive. And as a reminder, your donation is a double punch because that will also go towards our 30k milestone to unlock Sonic Adventure DX Director's Cut. Thanks. Also, I did some risky strats there. You might have noticed that I didn't hit anybody where the archer was and everybody missed me. Usually I'm shooting them with the shotgun and surprisingly, uh, that went really well, despite the fact that that was quite risky. And then we're going to aim there. Hopefully I hit the guy in the back. Good, that's the one we want to hit. Unfortunately, I didn't hit the guy who's currently aiming at me, but that's fine. And this guy's going to get grapple kicked. Excellent. There we go. And then we're going to flash grenade here. Excellent. And as we are coming up to the end of the run, Variety, would you like to tell the fine people where they can find you? Oh, uh, I stream on Twitch at a underscore variety underscore pack. Um, I tangentially run this game. <laughs> I would uh, now offer the chance for you to do the same. All right, you can find me at twitch.television slash Abby's Corner, but you can also find me back here on Thursday at 1.50 p.m. running Castlevania Symphony of the Night, Sega Saturn, Alucard, any percent. Um, that's at 1.50 p.m. on Thursday. Um, and uh, Carrera, would you like to tell the fine people where they can find you? Absolutely. You can typically find me in the Frame Fatales Discord server. Excellent. Also, that was time. My apologies. I called time a little late. Um, but that was the run. Um, yeah. And of course, we get the mysterious end credit scene of, hey, Wesker has Krauser's corpse, because of course he does. Um, but yeah, that was uh, Separate Ways, Any Percent, New Game Plus. Uh, thank you for having me. I appreciate being here. Um, and again, you can catch me again on Thursday. And I usually stream daily for several hours. Um, I'd also like to shout out some great female Resident Evil uh, speedrunners, uh, Marforia. If you're looking for Resident Evil 1 remake randomizers and speedruns, she's great. She's fantastic. She also does some rhythm games and is currently building the Titanic Lego set. It's huge. Um, also, Catlink, who you can check out at twitch.tv slash catlink. Um, she's fantastic as well. Um, and there's a whole bunch of other people in the RE community who run the various games. And yeah, thank you again for having me. And thanks, Variety, for joining. And thank you, uh, Carrera, for hosting. You did a great job. Thank you for playing. Thank you.